Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap-up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. Feel free to check out last week's episode and make sure you have subscription notifications turned on to be alerted of new episodes. We'll start with some general gaming news before diving into Diablo and Overwatch. Feel free to reference the timestamps in the description to skip ahead. And our first story is that Riot Games is now publishing the gambling odds for loot boxes in League of Legends. In other words, if you're wondering what the odds are of obtaining any specific item from a loot box, those numbers are now public. This is a positive step forward in this whole loot box debate of late 2017, early 2018. It's a degree of transparency that we can all appreciate. And this can hopefully become an industry standard without it needing to be enforced by law. But one interesting question that this poses is, how can any of this be verified? Because consider this, if the gambling odds could be data mined, then they already would be public. So if there's no way for people outside the company to know what the exact numbers are, then the best we can do is buy a bunch of loot boxes, collect user data, and when you're collecting user data, it's often inaccurate unless you're collecting just your own data in a proper scientific study. Because if you just rely on self-reporting, there's any number of errors that can be introduced. And then before you can really make any kind of claim, you need a ton of data points before you're able to contest the official numbers revealed by the developers. So given all that, what is to stop a developer from just lying about their gambling odds? On a lighter note, but also in League of Legends news, a German YouTuber recently played League of Legends via voice command. He was still using his mouse, but rather than a keyboard, all of those keys were activated via voice command. It's pretty interesting to watch. It's all in German, but you don't really need to understand what he's saying. You can understand the voice commands well enough, and honestly, it's worth the watch just to hear him repeatedly shouting, Alt, 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 in frustration. All right, on to some news that really upset me this week. And this has to do with the TV show Reboot, which is being rebooted. Kind of. If you don't know, Reboot was a Canadian CGI animated series from the 90s that holds a special place in the hearts of a lot of gamers. I grew up watching Reboot. It was this sci-fi action adventure with a really unique twist for the time. The premise is that Reboot's world is inside a computer. It's a representation of the inner workings of a computer. The villains are viruses trying to corrupt sectors and files. Every episode, the user loads in a game that descends upon Reboot's world. And those who get trapped in the game must reboot to become one of the NPCs in the game and try to defeat the user. As a young gamer, I loved this premise. I loved how it made us, the gamers, the villains in this story. And the NPCs, the people who are typically the villains, are now the good guys. It was, it was a great twist. It was a great way of seeing things from a different perspective. These NPCs, the AI, is trying so hard to defeat us because by us winning the game, we're somehow damaging their world. And I loved how every episode had a different game. So you'd have your medieval game sometimes, your fantasy game, your sci-fi game. And there was always a lot of references to real games and then just some other games, a lot of pop culture references as well. So every episode was this great adventure waiting to see what was in store. Reboot is also important because it was the world's first half hour duration full CGI TV series. So when I saw this week that a trailer for the reboot of Reboot had released, I thought, Alpha Numeric. Will it have little Enzo or grown up Enzo? So I start watching the trailer and I'm like, wait, did it, did I click on the wrong link? I'm seeing live action actors here. No, no, it's, it says Reboot in the title. Uh, I, I guess it must be an unrelated movie that just happens to be named Reboot. Uh, no, no, that's, that's, that's the Reboot logo. And midway through, my feelings of childhood excitement start to transform into, oh my god, I hate it. I hate it so much. Why did they do this to this thing that I loved? Then the Netflix logo comes up at the end, and I'm like, no, Netflix, why? What? The good news, I suppose, is that it will not be coming to Netflix Canada. Yep, this reboot of a Canadian TV show will not be coming to Canada. And that's a blessing. Nothing about this trailer is reboot. The only iconic reboot thing that they brought over was the villain Megabyte, and they made him look like garbage and sound nothing like his original awesome voice. You see, you see, you see this? This right here, this, this is Megabyte. This, this, this is, this is some garbage. This, this, this is what Megabyte sounds like. Now that I command Hexadecimal's power, none can stand against me. You did that? To your own sister? 
Yes, yes, yes. It's rather good, isn't it? And this, this is, this is what some garbage sounds like. Invade and infect. I suppose the most positive thing I can say about the trailer is that the CGI looks about on par with the 90s. On to some Warcraft news! Rumors swirled this week of Blizzard inviting a bunch of Warcraft 3 players to an offline event. This was reported by WoWhead and they were saying that many international Warcraft 3 players were obtaining visas so that they can come to the US for a secret Blizzard event. Then Blizzard revealed a major new patch for Warcraft 3, which is live on the Warcraft 3 PTR. It features widescreen support, 24 player lobbies, so a lot more people per game, and it even has some hero balance changes. Blizzard also announced the first Warcraft 3 Invitational for February 27th through 28th, an esports event, which explains why they brought in some Warcraft 3 Pro players. But my question is, why do all this? Is there that big of an audience of Warcraft 3 players currently that justifies this expense? Or are they looking to lay the groundwork for something like a Warcraft 3 Remaster? What do you think? Sound off in the comments. On to Diablo news. The new season has started and I've got my tier list and top 10 builds video up. If you're still trying to pick a class or a build to run with, feel free to reference that. In more clandestine Diablo news, a new patch went up this week for Diablo 3 that did nothing overtly, but it seems to have thwarted botters and other cheats, at least temporarily. The short explanation is that it is now far more difficult for a third-party application to gain access to the Diablo 3 info that it needs. You see, there is data stored in your computer's RAM while you are running Diablo 3. And these programs, like a bot or TurboHUD, would read that data. Now that data is encrypted and it's stored in a random location. Basically, imagine the data is a giant diamond. Previously, it was in a display case in a museum with terrible security. If you can break into the museum, you can steal the diamond. Now, every day, the diamond is transported to a random museum somewhere in the world. And it's kept in a safe whose locks combination changes on a daily basis as well. So now you have to first find the museum and then crack the code to get the diamond. This is apparently something that was done for World of Warcraft a few months ago, and it allegedly helped deter botters. Rumor has it that botters were eventually able to circumvent these new safeguards, but that the time and effort needed to do so discouraged a lot of them from continuing to support their bots. So what does this mean for Diablo 3? Well, first off, the author of the popular TurboHUD map hack slash overlay has said that TurboHUD may never work again. He doesn't seem particularly interested in doing the work necessary to try to figure this out. As for botters, it's likely bots will return, but we may possibly have at the very least a bot free start of the season. Time will tell. And if you're wondering why has Blizzard never done this before, doesn't it make sense to encrypt the data? The issue is that all of this adds more stress to the computer and possibly the server. So remember how the PTR went up some time ago and there were no changes, it likely was to test for this, to ensure that we can continue to get a smooth game performance while these encryption methods were added. Now the best news here in all of this is that Blizzard is continuing to support Diablo 3. It may have seemed to many for a long time that they were doing nothing to try to stop botters, this solidly proves otherwise. This has clearly been a secret project in the making for some time. Again, Blizzard can't publicly talk about what they're doing to stop botters because they don't want to give botters a head start to circumvent their countermeasures. In other news, Diablo 3 is allegedly going to come to the Nintendo Switch in 2019. Now this is just a rumor and it was leaked by a certain Marcus Sellers on Twitter and he also claims that the port will have local play with multiple switches and that it'll be released in early 2019. Now anytime we hear a rumor it's important to question its source, especially if it's a leak. In this case Marcus Sellers is a video game journalist and he's kind of known for leaking things, particularly about the Nintendo Switch. On December 4th, 2017, he tweeted about a Dark Souls Switch remaster. He said that this would be revealed at a Namco Bandai event on December 15th. But sometime before that event, he deleted his tweet. The event came and went with no Dark Souls remaster announcement. And we all thought that Sellers was a big, fat phony. But then in January, Nintendo revealed the Dark Souls Switch remaster. Vindication! So I guess he's legit. It could have been a lucky guess, but it mostly seems to be that this leak probably was legit. So this definitely lends credibility to the rumor that Diablo 3 might be coming to Switch. Now if this is the case, if Diablo 3 will come to the Nintendo Switch, Blizzard likely has a separate team working on it or a small subset 
of the existing Diablo team. The jobs that they've been hiring for, the ones that seem to indicate a new game engine and everything, the scope is clearly indicative of a larger project than simply a console port, even if that port happens to be a remaster. So I imagine that we have a relatively small team working on this Nintendo Switch port, whereas the brunt of the Diablo team is probably fully focused on the next game, but this does suggest to me that the next Diablo game is probably going to be a little further off than we would like. It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to release Diablo 3 on the Switch and then months later release Diablo 4, but who, who knows? What do you folks think? Do you think this leak is true? And if so, what do you think that suggests for another Diablo game? In other Diablo news, David Brevik, one of the fathers of Diablo who worked on Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, gave his thoughts on Diablo 3 in an interview with IGN. Feel free to check out that interview, but if you want some more in-depth thoughts from David Revick on Diablo 2, Diablo 3, and Diablo 4, you can check out my interview series with him. On to a couple cool things in the world of Diablo this week. We have this cover of the Tristram theme by Family Jewels. I'll drop a link to that in the description below, but here's a sample. And then we have a certain Diablo fan named Avali V, who is showing off his completed Diablo sleeve tattoo. Very nice. On to Overwatch news. Competitive Season 8 ends on February 25th. Also in Overwatch this week, we saw the Overwatch Puppy Rumble. In honor of Year of the Dog, the Overwatch team put together this, this cute little event. They took a bunch of puppies, they dressed them up as Overwatch heroes. They put them in this decorated arena for a mock Capture the Flag match. They live streamed this with professional casters that made it sound like a legitimate pro esports match and this was all done as a pet adoption drive and as of the time of this recording it seems that all the puppies have now been adopted so well done on the overwatch team for delivering something entertaining adorable professional and for a good cause i'll have a link in the description if you want to check out the vod next i just want to highlight a fan theory by redditor haku kukunoka wa wa na 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 haku Naona. I'll have a link in the description below to Akuna Matata's full theory if you want to read it, but basically she believes that the Junker Queen will be the next hero, Hero 27. She has a dissertation with plenty of sources that leads her to believe this, but a couple points are that Jeff Kaplan has said that they already hinted at the next hero, so it won't be someone that we've never heard of before. She pointed out that Jeff Kaplan posted a trolley reply in a thread about the Junker Queen, whereas he ignored threads about Hammond or Sanjay, who are also believed to possibly be Hero 27. And she points out how during the summer, during the Junker Town reveal, Jeff said that the team wanted to explore groups other than Overwatch, like the Junkers. For more details, check out the Reddit thread. And we're gonna finish up with some cool things in the world of Overwatch. Starting with this Vishkar Sombra fan skin by, of course, Chatty Window. And also by Chatty Window, we have this Human Zenyatta skin. Oh my god. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. And then lastly, we have Comedy King 3434, who took all the Overwatch anniversary sprays and made a full deck of Overwatch playing cards. Very cool. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. As a reminder, leave a comment on any and every story that we've covered. And if you would like to suggest a story that I cover, feel free to head over to the subreddit and submit it as a link. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can pledge on Patreon where your support is immensely appreciated. And we have some backer rewards like behind the scenes stuff and monthly in-game meetups. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.